we can kind of do a little recap here. It was a pretty simple uh, RP session last week. Well, really well talked to most of the town of Phandalin, meeting a bunch of the people who you all will be interacting with uh, across this entire adventure. Um, you ended up speaking with pretty much everyone from Elmar, Gariel, met the Stone Hills, you met a dwarf inside of the Stone Hill Inn, went and spoke with Darren Edermath over at the Apple Orchard, you ventured off towards Adabra Gwyn and the old windmill, uh, seeing that apparently there was a manticore that was making a nest around her hillock, um, and I believe that pretty much was most of the adventure. Started off meeting Ty, um, and then by the end of things, you head back towards the, uh, the goblins that initially ambushed you all, all kind of waiting for when you would meet back up with... Yep, that sounds about right. So we pretty much left off as evening was setting in. I believe you all actually left Phandalin close to evening, um, but it's not like a long travel to the area that you've tracked the goblins back to. Um, it is a ways off, but it's not like terribly far. Uh, and then you all have basically tracked them down a trail that seemed to lead through a few different locations that were trapped to funnel anybody who might be following the goblins into a little more isolated walking position where there were pit traps and then a uh, like levered tree in like a spike trap. Uh, and then shortly after, you all have come up on a large clearing with a stream to the east and a, I can't even think of the right word for it, a thick a set of trees blocking the east side of it so you can hardly even take to the shore on the east side of this little stream. Um, and the clearing opens up into a little cave inside of the mountains as you all head into uh, one of the more mountainous rocky regions, Sword Mountains. That's pretty much where we held off as you all had tracked the goblins back to, apparently, their hide. Everybody should be on the screen. You are welcome to describe what you would like to do. Otherwise, I believe you all had heard conversation from the east at this point. You hear the stream kind of making a soft, uh, constant noise that sort of blocks over a lot of things that you would hear about. Um, otherwise, you're facing about 30, 40 feet away from the wall of rock before you. Two, two Jastins? No, it's just my map, sorry. Names and titles. I remember the problem here was there was no place to hide on this approach. I think our plan, I remember uh, it was you and Jastin um, moving up, and we were, me and Edrin, were going to hang back as you guys were kind of trying to sneak up and try and look into the cave. Yeah, I think um, uh, part of the issue is the... Um... Like you said, it's it's very open, and it would be difficult to get into the trees uh, to the east of the, uh, the stream, and how thick they are. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I think we were we weren't gonna try and jump across that. I think um, I think you were just gonna try and uh, hit this tree line up here, and then try and move across this uh, kind of like this cave wall here, and see what you could see. That's right. That's what I was gonna do. Brant, sneak up to right there yeah so should we do you think should we, should we both sort of try and sneak up north or just have one of us go up first maybe i'll flip you for it uh sure sure i don't know who's better at sneaking that's bronze question uh probably probably me i'm a rogue let me not stand in your way then all right i'm gonna ready an arrow yeah so i guess i will try and stealthily move up north towards the trees Make a stealth check for me. Also, I just want to say, um, as I see a, a Bront draw his sword, uh -oh. draw, <laughs> draw a, a bow, um, I'm going to draw my great sword. <laughs> that was a critical fail. <laughs> you feel stealthy as you move forward. Bront starts laughing. Good uh, That's actually the exact reason why I will eventually start taking over stealth rolls, um, as well as another roll that I need to do for people. Uh, death saving throws. Because, again, you feel stealthy. Okay, so he thinks he's being stealthy as he moves up north towards the trees. Um, and then I guess, even though he's really not being stealthy, I don't know if he can try to hide sort of 
within the edge of those trees as his action. Yeah, that's you trying to hide as well. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, wasn't sure if that was a separate check. Uh, these trees, like the others, are quite thick. It's a lot of briars and very thick brush. Um, as you initially kind of start to crawl into them, getting stabbed and poked here and there, it's not really a good spot to hide in. And I'll, um, I'll try and sort of gesture back towards the others that I think I can maybe spot something um, to the east. Uh, just sort of make a motion, like maybe, maybe with like two fingers, um, hoping that they see it. I believe from there as well, you should be able to see the first signs of there seem to be some sort of canine creature inside of the cave to the east as well. Yes, I think um, rather than attack them right away, I'm going to um, kind of use a dodge action instead as my action on the turn. And we see the, were you gesturing towards the rest of us, like to to move up? Just no, just gesturing that, like, I, like with like two fingers, just sort of it, trying to indicate that I see a couple creatures. Oh, okay, all right. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't. Yeah, because I wouldn't know whether you can see them from your vantage point yet. Gotcha. You get a confused head shake back from us. We can't see anything. Wait, so I guess I could, probably couldn't use a dodge action. I just tried to use my hide action. So I guess that's probably the end of my. Um, I don't know. I can't see. Can it, are we able to move to the west? Like where it says on the screen, like the sort of the legend, the the map legend, or is that kind of like that's blocked off? I mean, vaguely there are options, but there's not much over there. What's what are you going for? Um, just like putting more distance between myself and whatever is in the cave I, that I can see. I would say it's pretty similar in that there are extremely thick trees and perhaps cliff wall along that edge. Okay, so maybe I'll just um. Yeah, I'll just like kind of end end there and you know wait for the others to move. All right. Um, with with him signaling that there's stuff there, I'm just gonna go ahead and move up. Um, I don't know, are we rolling kind of like turns in this, or you just wanna? Are we just kind of freely to do anything here, Amara? Uh, at this point, I am not putting you all into initiative. You are welcome if you'd like. I can bring up the initiative for you all, but at this point, I'm not putting you. In. All right. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and move up. If, he, if he's saying that he's seeing something, I'm going to go up there and uh, I'll try and be sneaky as well and to try and back him up if something does come attack him. Uh, I'm going to roll stealth as well, correct? If you were trying to be sneaky, you can certainly roll. <laughs> All right. Feeling quite stealthy, you move up into the same brush, kind of stabbing into yourself in a pretty similar way, realizing that the trees up there are far thicker than perhaps you initially had hoped. Uh, can I also roll a perception to look into the brush uh, to see if there's anything in there? Uh, brush to the north of you? Yes. Uh, you don't have to roll. There's nothing really for you to see. As you kind of like scrape around inside of there, it just seems to be like overgrown. Um, perhaps give me a uh, insight. How about that? Okay. Shit. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> Oh, it just seems like a wild brush that seems to just be growing up to the face of this rock. I'm about six or ten feet above it. You see the rock behind, getting a good idea that it's like five or ten feet thick in front of this cave. Kind of look to Jasmine, like, uh, you want to go ahead and uh, move in on the cave, or what, what, what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know, Bront, Edrin, you guys, I don't know what you, if you want to hang back still? Yeah, I feel that's I should probably hang back a bit, at least. Brown wants to stealth up to the side of the cave. Right here. You can try as well. She's going to do that. I'm going to do it like by 10 foot lunges. But here we go. Get a little fuller view of what appears to be some sort of canine creatures inside of the cave. Uh, behind some stalagmites growing off the ground to the east. The stream itself seems to run up into the main kind of walkway of the cavern. So I'm going to signal back to my team just with one finger because i see one goblin roll a perception check for me you do not see a goblin you heard them there but you currently do not see any signs of him okay what's going off i can see just the edge of one on the map sorry i mean i can hide everything from the map so you guys don't have an option to see things but okay um i'm gonna kind of motion uh, motion to edrin to kind of move up to us a little bit to kind of keep a little like a uh, yeah keep closer to us and then uh I'm going to look to Justin, Justin, and then um, ask me, you know, uh, you want to go ahead and 
run up there with him and um, kind of kick this thing off. Or... <laughs> See, then I, as Edwin, is going to move up. It's stealthily up towards them. Oh, I mean, um, I didn't mean that like you had to be right up on us. If you want to be like okay. a five foot space away or you know, do whatever you want to do. It's all it's all to you. Whatever you want. Yeah, actually, over here should be fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's cool. All right, so I'm going to suggest no sort of move up towards Bront. And then Let me have from... you roll a perception check, Jason. Uh, as you move up to the side of Bront, over the trickle of the water, it gets eerily quiet otherwise. There's like a little bit of sound of these canines that appear to be uh, just inside of the cave. There's the trickle of the water itself. But other than that, there was a speech that was kind of overriding this before, and it seems to have ceased. Okay, I'm going to see him move up, and then uh, I'm going to follow him, and I'll, I'll do the same kind of gesture to Edrin to kind of keep close. And then uh, when I get up there, I'll uh, I'll talk to them and say, uh, uh, okay, I, I kind of got a plan now. So I think all of y'all are kind of ranged a little bit, so I'm, I, got th I have to cross this river. Looks like we're going to have to cross this little stream, whatever, anyway. So I got, I'm going to go ahead and try and make it across, right? And you guys can attack from afar when I'm, you know, fucking them up over there. Super low DC to cross the river, but it is a dexterity check to walk across this stream. Uh, yeah, so I would suggest uh, Tyrell, you lead the way, and we'll, uh, we'll follow a short ways behind, ready to uh, support in case you uh, attract anything while you're crossing the stream. I think Bront and Justin would be well aware that there is a clearing to the east of the river at the actual cave mouth as well by this point. Oh, I mean like there's uh, stuff here? or like Yeah, there's an open spot. We wave yeah. you over. That where you all heard voices is likely where there is a clearing and now silence. Oh shit, okay. Alright, so I'll kind of move kind of up here where they can see me. And uh, I will cross right here this at this part of the river. Excuse me, stream. You say it's just a straight um, dex check? Yep, when you go to cross, it'll be a dex check for you. Fuck. Okay. That's enough. You're able to walk across it. Oh. Wow. Okay. I'm just kind of like... It's Super up to my low knees. DC is what I was going to... Uh, it's essentially not slipping on stones while you're walking across, like, wet rock. Oh, uh, okay. I got you. Okay. So then now I guess I'm, like, here. Uh, so as you walk across the stream, you all would hear the sound of a horn blast through the air. And that is when I will put you all into an fantastic a relief. Thanks. Thanks for making that happen, Ty. Hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just hard to get started. It's good that you took charge. I, I don't know how to add this shit. Hold on. <laughs> you uh, if you your click token? onto your character, uh, you can then go over to D&D &D Beyond and roll the initiative. Sorry, I forgot. To, I always forget to click my character first before I, uh, before I roll the initiative. Oh, I see. Damn, Jason rolls high as a motherfucker every single time. Every time I've seen Jason roll, <laughs> it's always high. Actually, I think I know for the Goblin encounter, I rolled like a four. I rolled terribly for initiative, uh, and my my stealth check was um, bad. It didn't end up hurting me too bad, but I'm just saying, Tyrell, is, as far as he's seen, is like, oh, this guy's this guy's all right. <laughs> uh, so as you watch Ty cross the river. Uh, pretty much as soon as he sets foot into the stream, you hear the sounding of a horn from the east. What would Justin like to do? Okay, so hearing the horn, he'll, um, he's going to uh, try to move across the stream as well, uh, sort of just like um, south and uh, west of Ty. Uh, can I call out? I, I, is, I think talk is a free action, right? So I'm going to call out. That one one second. Once you all are in initiative, you have six seconds to speak, but on your turn in initiative. It's the same six seconds ah. each time we go around initiative. Uh, and gotcha. the most important reason why I do that is because when people are in negotiating inside of combat, it's the fact that if you say something, you have to wait for that person to actually get a turn and hope that none of your friends and or other enemies do otherwise during that same six seconds as everything is progressing. Okay. So this is one of the few times where time freezes the moment I do initiative, because until we get back around to Yastin, it's the same six seconds of time uh, for everyone. That's fair. Okay, so you need a dex check while he's um, crossing yep, the street, to cross. Right? You cross without a problem. Okay, and now um, spotting 
uh, you know, spotting the the goblin to the south of him, he's going to um, uh, attack it with his uh, with his bow, the arrow. A fourteen will hit. Oh no, my bad. I said that. I said that too quick. I uh, misread a, a fourteen. Just missed. It blocks it with a shield. As it sticks into the shield. Okay, and then. Uh, let's see, he's gonna wants to see if there's any way if he can get south of himself to take some cover, uh, depending on how thick the trees are. Uh, it's that same situation. You can't really take to the banks on that side, um, but you can basically move behind what would feel like cover of the trees. Um, it would be the type of thing where at the start of your turn you're going to take the same dexterity check because you're forced to stand in the stream. Okay, yeah. So I guess he'll yeah, so he'll try to take what cover he can. Um, but that means sort of moving down one on the map? Yep, like more or less moving. It depends on how it kind of sits, but down into the left, southwest. So like so like there, I guess. Um, yeah, to try to get some cover. And then um, sort of um, motioning back towards Broughton, Edrin, he'll uh, um, sort of, again, make the same sort of like two motion and like yell and, and uh, you know, uh, something like two goblins um in the clearing and then uh, i guess that will probably end his turn it's going to break three free uh it's dragging a chain behind it as it charges forward towards brunt it's going to leap at him uh 15 to hit brunt yep uh, it's going to do eight piercing damage and can you do a strength check for me or strength saving throw success to remain on your feet brunt have any sense of how much more chain there is uh, it seems to have, like, a collar around it, and then about, like, three to four feet of chain. I was hoping it was going to snap up just short. No, it's, like, actively it broke a link as it charged at you. Okay, so it's free. Got it. Uh, 15 to hit, Ty. It does not. A goblin's going to charge forward with its scimitar as it slashes at you, and it just kind of flings off your armor. Uh, and then it will go to Edrin. As you see a wolf charge across the stream and leap into Bront, uh, fighting into, like, his arm at this point. Yeah, I'm gonna cast a firebolt at the... I can do that, right, without hitting Bront. Theoretically. <laughs> well, let's try it. Rolling critical fails on attacks is always something where potentials change. Uh, yeah, 15 will indeed hit a wolf. See, as its flesh is singed on its left side, uh, it seems overall to be fine, but it certainly took a good bit of uh, fur away as it burned away that side of the wolf. Any other movement from you, Edgen? No, I think I'm going to stay there, but can I do a dodge action, or is that... No, your action is to use the firebolt. Okay, let's see. Well, then I'm staying put where I am. So, Brunt, as you saw Yastin fire a arrow to the south along that eastern little corridor of trees in that clearing, uh, Tyrell has been charged by a little goblin slashing at him with a scimitar, and a wolf has snapped its chain with a pretty loud uh, ping as it's leapt across the, uh, the stream in like a singular motion and basically leapt into your arms and is biting on your left bicep. Brown wants to uh, attack with his rapier, since there seems to be no getting away. All right. A 15 will hit, uh, and you're able to kind of pierce through its neck while it's bit down onto your arm and pretty quickly dispatch the wolf in a single stab. Phew. Damn. Cold bloody. Anything else from Brown? I a move action. Yeah, I think I'd back up if I can. I still have a move action. Yeah, your movement can happen multiple times and throughout your turn. That's something that pervades your entire turn that you can make your movement. So you can start to move, take an action, continue to move, take a bonus action, and then move a little bit more. It's just up to what your actual movement is. Another goblin is going to move up to Tyrell as it starts to swing its sword at him. Again, being deflected, it just kind of like pings off of ground, missing a swipe at him. Uh, and it will go to Ty. You now have two goblins before you, each wielding a small sword of sorts, as well as shields, uh, like buckler-type shields. Alright, I'm gonna attack with my greatsword. Uh... 
Oh yeah, I don't have a choice between them. It's all two-handed, okay. They are able to deflect off of their shield. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's doing that thing again where it's not showing my proficiency. But yeah, yeah I know, I, I missed. Uh, is that done with D&D Beyond? Are you sending it through, like, uh, Roll20? Or uh, Beyond20? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just, like, I have the character sheet pulled up on D&D Beyond. I'm just clicking, like, right there. So, and having the roll. But yeah, that's fine. I missed. I just gotta remember to add it on. But I have, I have a proficiency have plus two. Uh, it looks like it's on there. It's just not showing it on the actual screen after Greatsword. Because it's doing the math as a d20 plus 5, which is correct. So, like, you've rolled a 7. I don't know why it's not showing it after the actual greatsword. That's the only thing that's kind of off. It looks like, a, it looks like a, I've done it twice now. and it, I didn't, I don't remember doing it twice. Whatever. That's all good. No, no, no. <laughs> I rolled the second one. The second oh, one was okay. made. But that's I gotcha, what I mean. I see, like, yeah. on your roll, it says greatsword. And then in quota- or in parentheses, it doesn't have anything. But it's still doing the actual plus five, even though it's not showing that the great sword has a plus five to it. It's not that you roll a twelve and it should be a seventeen. You roll the seven and it is a twelve. It just for some reason isn't showing the proficiency there. I'm not sure why it's missing that, but it's not actually the math is fine. Okay. Alright, whatever. Maybe I just want to use the roll twenty. I don't know. It, yeah, it's so cool. It's all good. You all see as another wolf kind of starts to lunge out of the cavern to the east, and at the last moment, its uh, tail and butt like whip around as it neck as its neck kind of gets caught up in the chain, and it will go to Yesta. All right, so Justin's going to attack the um, sort of this first goblin directly below Tyrell. Um, Let me have another. you start Is with a dexterity in- check. Okay, I was gonna yeah, I was gonna ask if depending on where he's standing. Um, if he would have, would be able to sort of steady a shot, or would he need to move before he can? Um, well, regardless for stopping in the stream, you're starting with a dexterity check, just to not slip uh, up. Okay. So yeah, your feet are still steady. Um, what was it like for uh, a battle master that you're looking for? No, I mean like in terms of if he's going to shoot an arrow, given his he's standing in the stream, whether that would like disadvantage his attack or um, if he can sort of attack from where he is, just like as a normal, normal roll. Um, overall, there are certain things that might do that for you, but essentially this stream is whether it's going to trip you up prone, not that you are unable to or, like, non-proficient all of a sudden because you're standing in water. Okay, so long as he's got his balance, he's... Okay. Um, yeah, so he'll, uh, he'll uh, attack this uh, first goblin, closest the one closest to him. Uh... Uh, as you kind of shoot into it, as the goblin's like swinging towards Tyrell, it just kind of like picks into its shield. Uh, it's in its offhand. Any movement or any other uh, bonus from you? So he's going to. I think he. I think uh, seeing that uh, Tyrell's got uh, multiple enemies coming after him, he's going to sort of as he's like sort of slinging his bow back across so he can uh, ready uh, a melee weapon for his next round. He'll move up. Um, sort of next to the goblin here, and then I don't think he has a bonus action yet, so he'll, um, I'll, uh, I guess end my turn there. Swinging again into Tyrell, uh, the goblin's just going to, again, kind of just ricochet off of your armor, and it will go to Edrin. See another wolf kind of caught up in its chain to the north inside of the cave, uh, as well as Yastin moving in on Probably just have you on one, maybe two inside of the fray of goblins fighting Tyrell. Well, seeing as I'm, I think they have it covered with the goblins. I'm gonna take another shot at the second wolf, or another my first shot at the second wolf. Twenty three will hit. You can just click on the red there where it says firebolt to actually damage up. Right, sorry. Uh, the wolf is bloodied as its sh- its tail and but are singed, and you can see that there's like, pretty quickly third-degree burns across the hind portion of the dog. Anything I'm else from gonna... Edrin? Is... Yeah, I'm just going to move up a little bit, see? Like that, and then I'm done. Uh, another wolf seems to choke itself as it starts to run out of the cavern as well, and it will go to Bront. Bront's going to fire an arrow at the damaged wolf, because now Bront is afraid of wolves. 
uh, kind of plings off of the wall of the cavern, just ricochets across the ground. And Bron's going to finish his action with a move. He's going to back up another 10 feet. Looking to Yastin, one of the goblins is going to strike at him. Uh, 12 to hit. Uh, that'll miss. Plink off of your armor, and it will go to Tyrell. Uh, another good old swing here. Not, uh, not making it. It's going to kind of like duck nimbly underneath your massive sword, and again, it will move off of you unless you have anything else to do. Shh. Um, no, I do not. Uh, the wolf is, with the burns across its back, is going to stretch the last bit of its chain as you hear a snapping sound from the link that it last put the most pressure on. As it frees itself, it is going to leap and bite at Edrin with a 9 to hit, should miss. Um, and it should go to Yastin. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, do I get an attack of opportunity? Was he passed by me, the wolf? Yeah, you guys can both make an attack of opportunity at it. Cool. Um, so at this point, I don't think I had, I had um, readied my sword yet, so should I, I guess I would make an attack with the um, bow, right? Right, Edrin would um, not have sort of gotten an attack of opportunity. Be... I was talking to Yastin and Ty. Um, oh, right. Sorry. Then. Yeah, so Ty, my last Ty's going to get the kill anyways, um, but I believe you had said you were going to start to pull your weapon, which what it comes down to is um, depending on how things are actually flowing, taking a shot with your bow um doesn't use your free action at all so you can usually like basically stow your bow with that free action and you would be able to pull your weapon um but like usually an attack allows you to actually pull a weapon as well uh so at that point you could have basically taken a shot with your bow and readied your next arrow and then be able to stow your bow with a free action while drawing your sword with the actual act of attacking with it. Uh, so, essentially, you don't have to use that action to, like, stow it a ahead of time, where you're, like, disarming yourself. Um, but okay. it's always up to you how you actually want to flavor things. The big right. difference to pay attention to while swapping items is that a shield always takes a action to dawn. Okay, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so I guess a moot point in this case since Tyrell managed to hit it. Yeah, I'd say it works out pretty um, good that Ty essentially just like on his uh, backswing is able to kind of uh, react to the snapping of the chain, cutting the, the wolf down. Right, so um, all right, so Justin's going to now with his uh, rapier um, attempt to attack the uh, attack the goblin to his right. Will most certainly hit with a crit. And I think I would have sneak attack as well. I don't know if it'll be necessary. Oh, as long as he's next to you, you have sneak attack. As long as he's conscious. Um, otherwise, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely apply sneak attack here. But I have a... I think I've got the sneak attack chart posted inside of like the uh, group stuff. If you ever want to look at a nice breakdown, it's like the... Um, Damn, I can't think of what they're called, but like the trees of if yes, then this, if no, then this, and how they lead back around to all of the different contingencies for sneak attack. It's a really nice like visual single page to figure out what gives you access to your sneak attack damage. Um, are those doubled with the crit? So I think if you clicked on the rapier, yeah, that's one of the reasons why if you don't select it to always roll critical... Um, which you can select at the top right on your screen where it's got the little red die. Um, you can select it to always roll twice and always roll critical. That way, if you ever have advantage, you've already rolled with advantage. Or if you ever have disadvantage, you've essentially already rolled with disadvantage. Um, but anytime you roll and it gives you one of those pink images, you can roll the dice with that. Um, and doing it that way on a crit, if you don't have it set up to already do it, Doing it that way on the crit rolls the extra dice. So essentially, you would have had 2d8 damage and then um, 2d6 damage because you critted there. So it rolls all of the damage twice. But 8 damage, even without the crit, was a kill. Okay. Um, so that poor little yeah. goblin just got dem devastated by a rapier <laughs> as you kind of just like dismembered it into five <laughs> different pieces. 
um but just so everyone knows do you all see that little polyhedron up at the top right of your screen yeah i, I was gonna ask like you said it's force crit, uh, force critical hit not force like. not force no not force okay always roll twice is one of the options there um and that rolls 2d20 every single time you're rolling Oh, the other one might actually be always roll damage might be inside of your settings. So do you want us to always roll twice? Uh, I always suggest it, or at least uh, prefer it. It's certainly up to you, but the idea is is that it always just automatically rolls regardless of whether I uh, call for you to have advantage like as you're rolling or some situations where you have it and don't recognize it. Um, but I do it in particular just because I think it's quicker to have all of the dice just automatically roll single click. And then we, ro- we just take the first roll if we don't have disadvantage or advantage. Yeah, the first roll is as if you rolled a single d20. The biggest thing why I understand yeah. if people don't want to do it is people who are superstitious and don't want to quote unquote waste 20s. Um, because there are people who I understand, I don't really understand it, but I understand why people don't like to see a 20 rolled on that second die roll. Um, assuming like, oh my god, I just wasted a 20 on a non-roll. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just not in that camp that. of how I like look at it and what is the biggest advantage to playing on a virtual tabletop is that if you always roll twice and you always roll crits, um, it just it's a single roll. Or And you always roll damage, it's just a single roll every single time. There's no multiple sections of rolling that breaks down into each extra little bit of time. Cool. Makes sense to me. It's easy enough to set it up. Okay. So after the attack, he is going to um, move a bit down again, sort of follow, sort of back towards Bront. Um, yeah. And then he'll end his turn there. Next little goblin is going to stab at Ty again. Is going to get a critical hit as he pierces through, like the armpit of your armor, and he will do thirteen slashing damage. What the fuck? Okay, I'm down. <laughs> Damn, sneaky little bastard. It's level one. <laughs> Part of the problem with having good armor class is that you only get hit by criticals, uh, and it will go to Edrin as you watch as uh yastin dismembers one of the goblins to the east of you another wolf snaps at its chain to the northeast and in a singular motion the goblin south and east of ty as the goblin like explodes between you and it seems to sneak its scimitar into ty's armor and ty falls prone at your feet or not at your feet but in your view i'm gonna shoot a firebolt at the goblin Uh, 13 will deflect off of its shield as it sort of just like stands back uh, into its offhand and lets the shield like kind of like catch the brunt of the fire blast and just deflect off into the sky above its head. Then I'm just gonna back off a bit and fair off the other wolf like there. Yeah, if anybody ever watches the actual videos after the fact, um, I like to roll everything as whispers as a GM, so it's all secretive. Um, I don't tend to fudge any rolls at all. Um, Usually about the only time that you might notice me fudging isn't necessarily when I knock somebody down, but when I auto-kill somebody. I'm I'm all good. I ain't no complaints over here. (laughs) No, that's the name of the game. Um, And then another thing that I often do is with unintelligent creatures, um, I I like to roll as much stuff as possible. So a lot of my creatures target based on a die to see who is a potential target and running um, basically based on the initiative order at who it runs after. That's why the wolf, like the last one, like charged at Edrin. It was definitely a random roll to see who it would run after. Um, And it doesn't really take into account that it's going to take attacks like a more intelligent creature may do as well. But that's one of the kind of reasons that it can often be, um, if you take the time afterwards, if there's a specific moment that, like, kind of caught your attention, you can always, like, kind of fast forward and catch up to and see where the rolls actually go to. But I really like rolling as much as possible for what the creatures do, so it's not me choosing to do stuff against people. 
Well, that makes all the damage feel better. So thanks for telling us. Uh, the next wolf is going to snap its chains as well. Uh, and it too is going to charge towards Edrin as it's going to make a bite attack at him. A 10, I believe, will miss. Did I get an attack of opportunity on that one? Uh, no, it didn't draw past anybody. It's still in combat with Bront and Edrin at this point, basically. I think it's only if it leaves your reach, right? Uh, yeah, unless yeah, I think it it's Polearm Master yeah. is the actual feat that allows it when it enters, um, where they can use their reaction on that same uh, level. But otherwise, yes, it's when it okay. leaves. Um, but that will go to Bront. Bront's going to pull his rapier and try to stab this wolf in the neck. Um, Eleven is going to kind of like stab through its uh, hair and apparently just kind of glance right off of the creature. It looks like he just rolled damage there, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. That is just a damage roll. Um, yeah, sorry. I blew that. What do you want to do? Oh, just roll the actual attack. If it's a hit, 11 will be the damage from it. Um, I think 13 is the AC. Yep, 13 will hit. So that will I be able to kill. 20. Exactly. I'll take it, though. Edrin, I, I don't want dogs biting Edrin. I'm in rough shape from one wolf bite. One of the bonus of being a level one character as well is crits are almost always wasted, except for that they're an auto hit. I don't think most of these creatures can take a even remotely well damage roll. So let me go ahead and do this. Shows how little I've actually rolled death saves. Okay, you're rolling my death save? Yeah, let me have you actually whisper it to me. Uh, click it to be whisper. And then roll a death save uh, to me. Uh, hold on. Because that's actually better because you have lucky. All right, so can I? I put it to on like beyond twenty, whatever. Um, to yeah, that little to die whisper. at the top. Yeah, it said to ask me to whisper, so I'm going to roll. And then uh... yeah, I would say that could get annoying because it'll ask on every roll. But if you basically switch it to whisper and then switch back, that's probably the better thing to do. But at present, ask me is for certainly acceptable. Okay. Uh, where the fuck do I go on the sheet to roll the save? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh, duh. Hell yeah. Uh, so you all see as Ty just drops to the ground, he uh, just kind of like takes a little moment, regains a little bit of consciousness as he kind of looks back up towards you all. Uh, and it will go to the wolf is dead. It will go to yes. So seeing uh, Tyrell sort of come back to life a bit, but knowing that there's still a goblin there, Justin's going to move up. Uh, let me have you make a dex check. Excellent. I don't know. Um, can he stand in where the goblin's dead, or would that be difficult terrain? Would he be? Moving? Oh, most certainly. No. Uh, once it's once like it's a body, back. most of the time I'll end up moving stuff out of the way. The problem with moving stuff for like the counter purposes is it's really easy for people to forget to uh, that there are shit that you've slain. Um, but otherwise, like that's all done. It's essentially just like. Random bullshit, but it's not specifically difficult to. Okay. Um, so the yeah, so then he'll uh, stab at the uh, its remaining goblin with his rapier. It will be able to deflect it with its uh, shield. Yeah, so I think uh, yeah, he'll just uh, he'll just stay there then. As it draws its sword effectively out of the armpit of Tyrell, it's going to take another quick slash at him. Again, deflected off of his armor, um, and it's. Yeah, it's just going to kind of hold that position at present. Um, and it will go to... Now, right here, it is going to disengage, and it's going to run past you. Damn. And it will go to Edrin. Yeah, I'm going to try to move... Uh, maybe the battery. Yeah, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to move up into the cave, basically. Like, there. That's 30 feet. Let's see. I had to make a dexterity saving. Check, right? To... It's just a dexterity check. Yeah. Okay, dexterity check. That is successful. And then I'm gonna firebolt the goblin again. Uh, 23 will hit. Uh, and 10 damage will burn it to a crisp as it runs from you. Nice shot, Edrin. Thank you. You're the, you're the bravest bookworm there is. <laughs> well, I am very eager to try my spells. Uh, anything else from Edrin at that point? No, I don't think I can do anything else. So... I'm done. To Bront. Bront's going to move up so we can see. That's 20 feet. Dexterity. Jack. 
Yep, just a normal check. Uh, you will fall prone. Uh, I think that was so 20 feet to there. My action? I don't think you can actually... Well, yeah, yeah, you would basically use your action to dash to be able to stand up with half of that movement. And you would have... Yeah, I think that's viable. You would have 20 more feet of movement. No, 25. All right. Wait, I said that wrong. Brown hopes nobody. 60 minus Brown 20 hopes. would be 40. It's 15 to stand up, so you would have five more feet of movement from that point. I want to get out of the water. Uh, and then to tie. <laughs> okay. Is there any sort of way, like, I can medicine check myself to, like, stop the bleeding and kind of heal myself up without magic or anything like that? Uh, unless anyone has the healer's proficiency, the healer's feet, rather and has a healer's kit, uh, there's not really a non-magical way to use healing other than resting. All right. Yeah, now's when we really miss Bowden. <laughs> Shit. Uh, okay, then. I am going to stay right here because <laughs> I'm fucked up and I'm kind of gesture at Jess and like, you want to you wanna go ahead? Well, the other guy that I did an onboarding for this last week, I think it was last Sunday night, um seemed viably interested in rolling a healer and then i feel like midway through the week he just kind of disappeared from discord so i'm not really sure what happened with that person one of the rough things about doing solo session zeros with people is spending time with them and then they ghost uh, and then the other person in the channel at present just hasn't really had a viable time to sit back and chat to go through character creation but we'll see what they go for as well Theoretically, we are at five people for the group, but we're just waiting to see who will uh, actually join. Um, so, at this point, I would like the entire group to make a strength saving throw for me. There's a massive uh, sound of water building up. Actually, wait a second. Dexterity saving throw, my bad. Natural one. Do you have dex proficiency with Bront for saving throws? I do. Let me see. No, I got so it'll be plus. I don't have dex. Oh, it's the same. Okay. All right. So Brant and Ty, can you roll uh, strength saving throws for me now? Hey, there we go. That was clutch. And Brant as well. Dex or er, uh, strength saving throw, please. Excellent. All right. So as there's a like crashing roar of water that kind of like pours down this actual tunnel here, everybody is able to. Move out of the way uh, for Ty and Bront. They don't quite get out of the way as they're blasted by the water, but are able to hold on to their position, um, just kind of like grabbing into the rock wall and or onto their friends for support as you all are in line and are able to brace yourselves from being pulled away with the rush of water. So there was a big release of water? Yeah, there was just like a, uh, a torrent of water that just like flowed by. Um, shortly after Tyrell's turn on that, that like round, like a like a defense by the goblins. Um, I think it's safe enough for you to say that perhaps there was something of that sort. You've seen like a small trickle from this stream, and then all of a sudden it was three or four feet and quite uh, a powerful torrent. Yeah, I must have dammed the stream and let it go, something like that. Bastards. Perhaps the <laughs> horn that was sounded was a call for that more than anything else. Interesting. All right. Are we out of uh, initiative, or are we still initiative? Uh, overall, I was going to drop like initiative for these purposes, but not necessarily make everybody roll initiative overall. But you all are open to, at present, you feel that you've ended combat and have a chance to do what you might. All right. Uh, hmm. What do you guys see up there? Yeah, Edwin, what do you see? I don't really see much of anything. Yes more cave so the cave goes to the north and to the east yeah there's an opening to the east and to the north it splits off and and like two parts like one goes uh, to the west and one goes a bit to the east but that's all i see i hate to lose initiative but i think we're a little we're a little broken to be taking this on this evening boys yeah i don't know if we want to chase in after chasing much farther just quite yet um can Jason just uh, Jason like to search the uh, the dead goblin at their feet? Uh, do a investigation for me. Um, you're able to grab uh, a couple of arrows, and by a couple I mean a single. Um, and then you're able to find three silver on it. Um, it's got a little buckler 
that's pretty damaged at this point. Um, and its scimitar is a pretty rough make. Uh, the leather itself seems chewed up and kind of damaged as well. Uh, it doesn't look like something that's doing especially well, so much as these things seem to be making do with what they have access to. Does the buckler look usable at all, or kind of just uh, junk? Uh, all of their gear overall looks like junk. Okay, so he'll, um, he'll grab the arrow, stick it back in his quiver, and the three silvers. Um, That's an and... extra arrow. Um, overall, like when you all expend ammunition in combat, when you finish up a combat, if you take any time to kind of like clean up and go about things, I assume that you find everything, unless in particular I tell you something is lost when you spend it. Mm. Okay. Okay, so he'd be otherwise able to get back, I think, the two we fired plus this one. Yeah, yeah, so you would have basically gotten three arrows from that. It just depends if you were already knocking okay. off your, your ammunition there. Um, I don't think I've taken any ammunition from any of you all here. So if you started with a certain amount of expendable ammunition, you would still have full ammunition. Um, there's very few times where, like, if the parties run off from an encounter, you would lose all of that expended ammunition because if you win the encounter is when you actually get stuff back. Um, but that's like just one of the ways. I don't think keeping track of ammunition is necessarily entertaining, but there are certain situations where stuff's lost. Like if you're fighting by a cliff edge and you miss, I'll tell you specifically that arrow f flies over the cliff and is lost. Okay, sounds good. Um, I guess I would have gone for the the um, confrontation with the goblins before. So basically, he's got a full uh, full uh, quiver. Yeah, you'd have the full plus one. Okay. Yeah, I'd say we uh, we might want to get Bront and um, Tyrell a bit of uh, a bit of rest if we can. Even though, I mean, we know the goblins know we're here, um, but it seems a little foolhardy to <clears throat> keep rushing on in. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, I mean, a, a short rest, maybe at least you know something like that, or yeah, I think with a short rest you gain a hit die. You and Bront both, assuming it's mm -hmm. not interrupted, which would be maybe an issue, but um. Yeah, it's in the evening too. I mean, I, whatever you whatever you guys feel like, I'm pretty fucked. Even if you know with a short rest, it's not really gonna help too much. But I mean, it's whatever y'all want to do. I'll I'll just hang back. I got a little crossbow here. <laughs> I can I can pop shots too. Um, yeah, but I, I would totally be down for a long rest. Yeah, no, we should probably take a rest to heal up you guys. Grant definitely wants to take a rest after we cut some backstrap off one of those wolves for dinner. Well, make yeah, sure but... we want to run here. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna look up here real quick. Hold on. Okay. All right. <laughs> Never mind. Instead, I thought. There's Can a we lot of caves. The There's a lot of opportunities in those caves. It looks like. And what's the worst case if we go back to town, guys? We come back tomorrow, and there's another outpost. There's another sentry, but we know where they are. They're not gonna be any more wolves, probably. Yeah, we could probably stock up on some healing stuffs. Uh, yeah. I mean, if we do try and rest here, at least we gotta back up a little bit, you know? Um, you know, not can be we... right, and right near the mouth of the cave. Yeah, can we recall if we passed any sort of, uh, particularly defensible position on the way up towards the caves? You know, that looks like we might be able to sort of, uh, without having to go all the way back to town, set up sort of like a defensive perimeter? Uh, roll a survival and a intelligence check for it. Not good. <laughs> I mean, this clearing should be pretty defensible. Don't look over there. Brown's a little skeptical. Like, if there's five of them out here, there must be five times as many inside, don't you think? Yeah, it would be too easy to get trapped in this clearing here, I think. I do like the idea of barricading it with all these bodies and hanging out behind it, but I think we're going to get stuck. Uh, as you're trying to think over things, you can't actually get anything to mind that seemed particularly defensible. Um, on your path out here. Uh, from that point on, you're almost looking at, like, heading quite far away from this actual area. And just for future information, when I'm calling for an intelligence, you can just click the actual stat uh, where it says intelligence. An intelligence save is different than an intelligence check. Um, and in particular, I say that because, Yastin, you have intelligence as a proficiency for your saves, so your save is oh, different than your check. Okay, so like that top row, 
where they have the actual like the modifiers and the scores use that one okay yeah i think actually if you click intelligence the modifier or the score i think all of those roll the same check okay okay good to know thanks so Bront thinks we should go back drink at the tavern rest up for a whole day pick up some healing equipment of some sort and then hit this again in 36 hours what do you guys think beers on me well, I'm not <laughs> against that, Heidi. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. We may be. Yeah. yeah. We may be pressing our luck too much unless we uh, retreat and fight another day. We're not that strong. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's just. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll do that. I guess. I think our strongest guy was dead for a little while, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to stand I behind lucky. you, but I can't stand behind you when you're dead. Yep. I'm like, imagine I'm still covered in blood, just kind of like barely standing. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I, I can't, uh, I don't feel uh, very confident going into the state. So let's just go ahead and head back. Yeah, do we think we can make it back before like real night falls? I like guess I said it was like a couple miles back to town. Uh, I think you had about a two hour uh, track out to this area. I think it was about an hour and a half or two hours. To where you were ambushed um so it's probably like two and a half to three hours at least on your way back towards town you're you're easily into nightfall um that was yeah. probably approximately like another hour of time progressing there okay well the goblins are fairly cowardly hope maybe they won't uh come after us while we're trying to get back to town at this point has everybody at least headed out of the actual cave mouth Oh yeah, I or are you all so. still standing yeah. where you have your tokens? I guess we would have, we would have um, crossed back over the stream at this point. Like that, I guess. Yeah. So uh, while you all are progressing on your way back to town, uh, you can follow your trail back, noting the few different locations where you had already spotted traps, uh, and be able to walk around and avoid those. Moving back onto the tribor as well as then back to the road that leads directly to Phandalin. Um, and you are able to progress back towards Phandalin, uh, just outside of town. You're going to hear little rustles to the sides here and there, uh, kind of like a cackle of uh, wolves of some sort, perhaps uh, howling in the night. Um, you don't feel especially comfortable on your walk back towards town as you get back, but after a while, you do make it back into the safety of what feels like civilization as you round the last couple of switchbacks, heading up into the hills of Phandalin and uh, into the first, like, outer layers of, like, some of the farmsteads before you make your way inside of the ruined wall and are once again presented to Phandalin and... Go straight to Stonehill Inn? I think so. Yep. Maybe just uh, buy some dinner, bring it up to the room, and let uh, Tyrell and Bront uh, try and recover. Unless you want to stop for a drink. I'm always, Justin would always be fine with that, too. I'll probably snatch a keg on the way up. One of those little mini kegs, whatever. So I think for, I think it was like 15 silver. Grab the room for you all and a mini keg if you'd like to pick that up into one of the four person kind of like a barrack style rooms. You can set that up for yourselves and head on into a little bit of privacy. Yeah, so Justin will pay for the uh, the 15 silver for the, uh, uh, the keg in the room. Yeah, they, uh, you guys want to just head up? Yeah. I'll... Um... I'll pay for the keg. The keg was like um, one gold, so I'll pay for the keg. You only have to give him um, like five silver. Okay, sure. Yeah. Brown likes this group where he can offer to pay for drinks and doesn't have to. It's nicely done. Thank you, boys. But mostly just goes to sleep. Wraps his arm. Nasty. <laughs> yeah, I've, I imagine I would have bandaged up the uh, the under armpit <laughs> wound. So Justin will. Grab a drink from the uh, from the keg, um, and maybe uh, 
before he's getting ready for bed, he, just, he wants to actually ask uh, Edrin uh, what kind of spells he knows, get a better sense of, uh, the, you know, his uh, capabilities. You have a arcane proficiency? I do not. Roll an arcana. He wouldn't even know what they meant if he told them. Yeah, I'd say overall, unless somebody actually has a reason to understand arcane things, uh, it would essentially be meta-knowledge to know too much. Yeah, I mean, you can describe stuff to him, but yeah, I mean, overall, I would stick to, like, kind of describing schools that you are focused on more than anything than, like, actual knowledge of the spells. So essentially, Edrin will tell him stuff, and his eyes will just glaze over, and he'll get no useful knowledge. Well, I mean, I can dumb down it a bit, like, the firebolt, it's... I'm casting a bolt of fire! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that much, that much I can follow. Uh, I got out of it, he can shoot fire out of his hands. <laughs> uh, um, being in the Lord's Alliance, did I see spell casters? Uh, there's definitely a predominance towards actual combatants, but there are certainly people who are actually um, casters of sorts, and they would tend towards some of the more upper echelons, but it's definitely a viable thing for you to have learned about, or at least be aware of. Yeah, I, I still don't know anything about it, but like I, I've seen maybe something like what he's done uh, during battle there, so kind of. I don't think anybody would be surprised about the existence of magic. That's on the same level of you would vaguely know that goblins are knight type of creatures, um, but it's more like actually having an understanding of something like... Um, it, my point being isn't that anybody wouldn't know about magic users, but that, like, you wouldn't necessarily know a big difference between, like, a firebolt and a magic missile. You would just see somebody, like, unrele or releasing magical power from their hand and affecting the world about them. That's kind of my point here, is without, like, a reason to know what he's doing, you wouldn't really understand the magic behind it. I gotcha. I gotcha. But I think everybody would be pretty understanding of the fact that most major cities are often ruled by, if not ruled in the shadows by, people who are powerful welders of magic. Um, and most military organizations on that same level are there. Uh, a lot of people with any level of kind of adventuring proficiency would understand that while there are a lot of magical users who are adventurers, a lot of them die. And those who live usually become like very influential their spheres around them. My biggest thing with Yastin, though, was whether he was... I guess it's probably too early. I don't think uh, rogues choose at level 1. But, like, if he was an arcane trickster, I would have been 100% behind the idea of, yep, you can hear all of his spells and have an understanding of those spells. You know, all of them yeah, that he no, would he tell would, you. Yeah, I think... Okay. Okay. That no, makes sense. Yep. And then the same thing for, like, the fighters. If you're actually going down the line of a... Uh, God, I can't even think of the fucking word for him, but the actual subclass that's a caster, the uh, you have a lot more reason to understand what it is that um, Edrin does. Gotcha. I think I'm most likely going to shoot for Battlemaster then. Yeah, and I think uh, <laughs> Tyrol's going to drink probably half the keg and then uh, go to bed. <laughs> you refresh all that blood you lost. Yeah, I got to... Take some supplements here. <laughs> yeah, so essentially buying your keg, getting your room, and heading up there. Uh, you all are welcome to take a long rest at this point. Um, and we can progress forward from where, what you'd like to do come the morning time. Um, during the night, I don't know if anybody would hear it, but uh, um, Tyrell does have some uh, nasty dreams. <laughs> by nasty, I meant like nightmares and shit, not like <laughs> in the... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. That's good. I didn't think about it that way, but thanks for framing it up. So that okay. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I realized how I said it afterwards, so I was like, oh, no, not like that. <laughs> they're, they're nightmares, excuse me. Brown wakes up feeling great and wants to go downstairs and get some breakfast, so uh, that's what he does. Uh, you can go downstairs. You see mm -hmm. Trelena Stonehill. Uh, she is down kind of like keeping track of the bar in the inn setting up a few different things and you are able to uh, you can get a simple like cold breakfast for 
five copper, or you can get a nicer, uh, like warm, uh, just like whatever random meat is from the last animal they've slaughtered, or a, a silver and five copper, so fifteen copper. I'm getting a, I'm getting fancy breakfast. We had a rough day yesterday. I need to get ready for a good day today. Uh, is Trellin's husband around? We never did catch his name. Uh, at present, you don't see him. She seems to be the front of the house at present. Um, but if you'd like, you can certainly speak to her and see. Um, but it is up to you what you would like to roleplay and what you are actually trying to accomplish. And that's just the difference of when you all actually like ask a specific person a question, that's different than asking me a question. Like on the level of saying, we that. never caught his name, to me doesn't say you're asking her. But if you say... Um, Something to the level of, Chilena, what, what's your husband's name? Is anybody else coming to breakfast? Yeah, ja yeah, Jason will join him for breakfast, and they'll go for the, uh, the fancier version as well. Yeah, Adrian will do the same. So, what do we say, 15 copper? That's correct. Trellin, have you heard any stories about goblins around here? We ran into one just north last night. We've had a lot of problems with goblins in the area for quite some time. They usually keep to themselves around the mountains, but uh, they'll often waylay different passerbyers in more isolated positions. Who's, uh, who's responsible for keeping them back? <laughs> We're on the frontier, young lad. We don't have anybody who's responsible for anything. <laughs> Fair enough. The best we ever get is when Harbin's feeling a little more useful, he might put a bounty out to... Uh, try to attract an interested party to doing something. But when he does anything of those sorts, it's usually becomes the town actually uh, levies enough of a fund to get an interested party than him actually taking any initiative. So you have to pay for it and you have to organize it. Well, that's how everything works here. We, we've elected him as our town master maybe not because he's good at it, but because he serves the function. Yeah, he doesn't seem good at it. That's true. Well, he is kind of the most useless person in town, so doing something other than what he would normally be doing, it's at least adding something to everyone's lives, even if he's terrible. Well, pretty much everything about him is terrible. <laughs> well, this is the breakfast I was hoping for. You're quite charming, Trailin. Thank you. It's our pleasure. We appreciate having you all in town. There's little that is well for an area like this, but having travelers and repeat customers is always just what we need here. All right, gentlemen, what's next today? we got to find some healing to bring with us on this uh, cave search we're doing, right? Yeah. Um... We can see what's available at Barthens and what the cost would be. Or there's also the... Um... The uh, shrine. We can ask if um, I forget his name. Get her name, Lady Gariel, if she has anything available. Those are probably our two best options. Uh, if you all ever have a chance to go visit Adabra, she actually makes potions from the different herbs and spices, things that she rounds up, and she's got a little bit of a uh, alchemical talent to her, making different potions and things. She's always a wonderful person to know. A little south and west of we us did, here. She's got a. We did swing out there, but uh, she had a guest. Oh, she has guests on the regular. If you just wait your turn, she's very. Don't surprise her, but if you're able to just kind of wait patiently, she'll see you nonetheless. She's a very friendly person if you don't come up on her on unawares. Uh. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, um. I'm gonna be like looking at those like. Hmm. I, I'm, never mind. I can't say it. Is there a chance that the Manicor was an illusion? Uh, mm, I don't know. I don't. I don't uh, you can certainly yeah, know that she is a innkeeper. She is not an adventurer, so her sphere of knowledge is probably pretty isolated to what happens inside of the inn and occasional bits of things that she hears from the town about. You know, I'm kind of, I'm going to whisper to Bron, like, maybe for, let's not tell her about the, you know, thing. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It makes sense. All right, so uh, where to, gentlemen? I'm happy to go to the shrine and talk to the lady, Godrail. Uh, yeah, let's go talk to her. Well, um, she said the only one she knew about was a, a Dabra, so that's kind of, 
that's kind of a closed window there, so let's just go uh, talk to this um, uh, lady at the shrine. Gadriel. Great, we want to get going so we don't get caught late at night in the woods again. Yep. Uh, so what is your thought at present? I think we want to head over to the uh, the shrine, right? Yeah, we. Yeah, and see that lady. Yeah, we should probably check this shrine first. Uh, and what sort of information, or what would you like to say to Gario when you arrive at the shrine? So Jackson's going to give another um, couple of coins into the uh, the offering pool as they enter, um, and I guess uh, he'll ask her um, uh, whether she knows if there's any sort of um, healing available, like any alchemist or um, healer in town or anything she has available within the within uh, the shrine. You just mentioned that they ran into a bit of trouble the day before. Uh, well, when you ask for healing or anything, she would point you again back towards the Dabra. Um, so she would kind of fall back to, well, I thought you all were going to visit a Dabra. Were you... Did you not find your way to the windmill? It's the big windmill that's on top of a hill. I think we uh, we came back and told her about the Manticore. Um, yeah, we did. I told her. Oh, yep, that's my bad. Um, let me have... When you all come back to visit her, uh, she would kind of come back out with a little book of her prayers. Um, and she would... Perhaps if you all head back and you try to speak with the Manticore, you might be able to bribe it. The danger in speaking with a Manticore is not that it will harm you given a good conversation, but that it will get insatiated over time by the desire for your wealth. But. At present, you may be able to buy your way past, and a chance to visit Adabra. Uh, other than that, there is little more that I can offer you. Uh, I'm not a healer of sorts. I only have a little bit of the touch from Timora. Well, we can certainly use luck as well. Yeah. Mm, I don't know about talking to a manacore. Uh... How do you guys feel about that? <laughs> Edrin, do you speak Manticore? Uh, I feel confident Edrin can work it out. He spoke to all those Cobalt. I'm not yeah. really sure that Manticores and Cobalt speak the same language. Ron's pretty sure. He knows nothing, but he's very confident about it. I think you may come to find that the Manticore is well more intelligent than we are here. Uh, I believe if you are interested in having a conversation, and explicit with the desire to pay it for its time, we'll find it takes the time to speak with you. Well, that is an option, I guess. Well, I trust Lady Gadriel. She seems quite above board. What do you guys think? Well, I think that someone else can start talking to it. Well, Justin wouldn't be, he wouldn't be sure he likes the idea of having to give some of his gold over to the Mana Core. Um, and he's just wondering... Like sort of as Gabriel uh, said, how much it's going to want, and not just now, but maybe possibly in the future. But if that's our only option for um, getting some healing, he'd probably reluctantly go along with the rest of the group if that's what they want to want to do. We got to pay the piper. So if we had to pay a gold to get to Lady Adabra, that would be reasonable, right? Mm. Jasper would have no idea how much a mana core needs for a bribe. <laughs> I believe well, you the... may have to pay a much higher price than a gold. Yeah, I think that we've already kind of started this thing with the goblins. They probably got some gold. I think, yeah, I saw you pick some stuff up from that one. Let's, let's go. I'm thinking that we should finish the thing with the goblins. Go kill them. Take their money. And then pay the mana core. Boom. Done. And the longer we... <laughs> the longer we leave the they... dead guy. Longer the longer we longer we leave the goblins to themselves, uh, the more time they've gonna have. They're gonna have to uh, retrap the area and get ready for us uh, coming back. Does anyone to I'll sort of Jasmine kind of agree with uh, Tyrell that it might be better to uh, finish what we started first. You all would be well enough aware to know that any time you're able to take a short rest, your enemies are likely taking a short rest as well. 
anytime you're taking a long rest, your enemies are taking long rest as well. Mm. Yeah. What's good is that five of them are dead. It is a start. Yeah, and so far, none of us are dead. But my point being is, is <laughs> that it. you've already given them eight hours. Whether you give them eight hours or I think the original thought from, I don't remember. I don't have your voices down yet, but somebody originally mentioned coming back in 36 hours. Um, I think you all would have a pretty good understanding that leaving was where you gave them a chance to react to you, that a lot of things have probably already happened regardless. Yeah, that was that was brought. I figure they're all dug in and ready to go, so we got to be prepared when we go back. And I don't want to talk to a manicure either, but I, I believe Lady Gadriel knows what she's about. Yeah, maybe we should just go back to the goblins. And I'm not sure how much money you have to spend right now, but this campaign, as it's written, is an extremely potion light campaign. Um, I usually offer options to get them. Um, as viable ways to get around it when you don't actually have a healer, but I am not going to necessarily reward people for not playing um, ideal classes without uh, taking a sacrifice in exchange, which is my way of saying usually somebody has to die before I give you a healer option. <laughs> well, let's go see who that is then. <laughs> it's a good way to learn that you can front load all you want, but if you're not super aggressive in front loading, it's a great way to get people killed. Uh, so it's one of those things where eventually somebody recognizes that there are classes that have access to a lot of damage and also abilities to heal. So depending on how things go here, you all are uh, welcome to head in the direction that you would like. You can gamble with the Manticore if you want to go after a Dabra, who is the only option for buying potions inside of Phandalin. Um, I'm not sure if it was explained when you all first went to Barthens Provisions, but Barthens offers everything in the player's handbook for sale that is under 25 gold from the adventuring gear, which does not include healing potions. Um, and then if you are able to charm Linian, which I feel like you all did a pretty good job to start it off with, she has all of the weapons and armors for sale. So Forever. Justin's going to ask Edrin, um, Justin wants to ask Edrin if he... You know, in his previous studies, if he knows anything about mana cores that might help us make our decision between, you know, trying to uh, maybe bribe the mana core or just go after the goblins. I don't think he's going to have any extra knowledge beyond what Gariel has already shared with you all. Um, that perhaps your only option with that thing is to either fight it and attempt to kill it or to try to bribe it and uh, pass by unaffected by it because you've given it gold. I think Jason would be leaning towards going after the goblins, given that even if we can bribe the Manticore, that might not leave us with enough to purchase anything from Adabra afterwards. And he'd sort of just like explain his reasoning like that to the to the group and see what the others think. Yeah, I'm not really sure how much we can trust the Manticore either. I mean, maybe we bribe it and we are let in to buy, but then we have to bribe it to get out and then we're stuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I choose the goblins. <laughs> yeah, goblins is much safer. Let's go get some goblins. All right, I think it's decided then. Yeah, let's go for the goblins. We're off to see the goblins. I'll just warn everybody to keep their eyes out for traps, given that now we've... They definitely know we're here now, and they we know they've set traps, at least several traps before, so we're just going to... When we head out, we want to be probably... Um, you know, mindful of that and keep our eyes open. Stay alert for, you know, any additional traps in addition to the ones we already caught our first time up. Smart. Will do. And the good thing is this time we're heading up there earlier in the day, so we can afford to probably maybe take a little more time and sort of proceed a little more cautiously. All right, all right, all right. We all can begin to progress off into the wilderness, heading north out of Phandalin. As you all follow your path down towards the Tribor Road, having a uh, pretty simple journey back to the general location where you had been ambushed in the past by the goblins, and begin to track your way back across their normal path, keeping an eye out for traps and whatnot. Can you do a uh, survival and then perception from whoever is leading the party? I believe it's Yeston. Yeah, I think... He would be he would be in front. Um, so sorry, perception survival. Yep. Is there any way I can uh, 
assist. Um, do you have a survival proficiency? Yeah, plus one. No, like proficiency in survival, not just oh. a plus from your stat. I got you. Uh, no, I do not. Then no. Um, specifically on different things, like that's where we kind of isolate certain people's abilities to make them shine in their own ways. Whereas, like, when something magical comes up, you all can, like, lean towards Edrin because he has a proficiency in his study of Arcana. Um, it's the type of thing where only has the option to do it. So often doing some sort of level of assisting someone, like, outside of doing the help action in combat, assisting is pretty much always going to be limited to when you have proficiency in that skill. So it's not just a question of if there's one person... But if there are two people, gotcha. Uh, you have a pretty simple task following your way back towards this area. Uh, as you all do start to move deeper into this forest area, uh, there is going to be a point where you all are assaulted by a flock of birds that will swoop down at you all. Ooh, damn it. Uh, they will swoop down on you all at unawares. Uh, and let me have... Got you all on this map. Let's drop you on this map here. Let me just have you all, like, place yourselves as you would be essentially walking down this trail. So it doesn't really matter the direction that you're heading on the trail, but if we have Yastin at the front, and then however you all would like to be following. Black for me. Um, I don't remember what I... I maybe I had to do something last time? I don't remember what I did. Which way are we going? Up or down on this map? There we go. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You guys can be going north or south. This is purely just to give you the strategic option of how to look at things. All right, yeah, so assuming Jason there is at the front, if you want to go, you, the rest of you want to put it yourselves behind based on what our, our marching order would have been? Well, that seems right. And then like Jaston, Tyrell, then Bronf, then Edrin, right? Sort of in a single file. Yeah. 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 And do you want us to go ahead and roll initiative as well? Yeah, you guys can roll your initiative here. I'm still setting things. It's just a random encounter. Did anybody lost roll 20 sheet? Oh, what happened? It's crashed on me twice. I just wondered if that happened to anybody else. Uh, I feel like weekends are always going to be the sketchiest time to be on roll 20 that it might be crashing. I don't believe there's any reason why. But... Okay, right back. I'm all set. Alrighty. So as you all hear like a cacophony of bird chirps, all of a sudden there's a massive just like dark cloud of birds off to the east as you feel the first wave of them swooping down into you one is going to swoop into bront and make an attack i believe an 11 is going to go ahead and miss as it dives into you and its beak just glances off of your flesh uh, and it will go to justin Justin. all right so justin's going to um, he's going to come up here and try and uh, basically stab the bird in midair with his rapier as it's attacking uh, Bront. Seven is going to miss. And yeah, I think that's it for, for him. Bird is going to swoop down, attacking Yastin. 23 to hit. Yep, that'll hit. Uh, as it pierces into your flesh with its beak, it's going to do six piercing damage to you. The next bird is going for the same targets as it swoops down into Yastin. Uh, 13 to hit. I feel like that'll miss. And it will go to Bronx. Uh, that one misses, yep. So the one that's right next to me, is it reachable with my rapier? Because I would probably shoot an arrow would be my choice. How's it look? Um, Effectively on these, they don't really uh, give any sign that they're doing like drive-by attacks. So I would say by and large it essentially swoops down into you as its initial attack, but as otherwise, they're just starting to peck at you as they continue to attack. Okay, I'm going to attack this one that's uh, closest to me with my rapier and miss. How bad do you miss? Roll a d20 for me. Yastin, does a 18 hit you? Uh, yep. <laughs> like six piercing damage. All right, so Justin's down. I just killed him. So, Justin, I'm oh sorry. my fucking god! <laughs> so Just, Justin's gonna I'm give go uh, Bronn a, 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 a 
incredulous look as uh, Brot stabs him. That seems right. <laughs> when you asked about the firebolt, can I shoot this at Bront and not hurt him? All I was looking for is on a one. No, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> But that was one of those situations where I rolled randomly to see who it hit, and that's why I asked for an attack roll, is to then see if it pierces past his armor still. That was demoralizing, huh? Uh, this next one is swooping at Tyrell. 24 to hit. That'll do it. Uh, and it will do 8 damage. Piercing. Alright. Uh, another swooping down at Ty. Eight should miss, and it will go to Edrin. Yeah, I'm thinking here a bit, but... Just to throw it out there, this is the type of situation where going Nova is a really good idea. If you have a spell that affects a lot of creatures, this is probably where it would do the most to save your lives. Um, it, yeah, I'm just thinking about... Because there's friendly fire on Thunder Wave, right? Uh, I believe it says all creatures that it indeed will hit Bront, um, as well as it would do a death saving throw to uh, tie on the ground. I think and it would hit. I actually think it would hit Tyrell too, because it's fifteen feet away from me in all directions. Oh yeah, that was my mistake. I was thinking five feet. Um, Thunder Wave might be the one that you actually cause it from your hand, and you create the cube wherever you want essentially in a direction off of your person. Um, I'm going to look at that right now, though, to make sure. It reads that a wave of thunderous force sweeps out from you, each crater in a 15 feet, ah, 15 foot cube originating from you must make a constitution saving throw. Yeah, so you, you choose the direction. Yeah, that's the one where, like, you basically, you're putting your hand out and you're making a cube in a direction from you. Okay, so I can... Yeah. If you guess if you went down, you might be able to hit a couple. Oh wait, no, there's tired air. Sorry, never mind. I think you're maybe hitting this way, but that still hits tired, right? Diag uh, diagonally down to the left. Yeah. So it's the type of thing where you're like creating a cube, kind of however you'd like here. But yeah, like you would basically have, like you would hit Ty as well as Yastin. That was probably the only one that you wouldn't hit anybody. Um, you could hit, yeah, I mean, there's, they're essentially inside of you all, though, as they are pecking at you, something with that level of AoE is definitely going to hit friendlies as much as anything else. Uh, think about how much, get, uh, how much I can risk here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but even with, like, straight down, like, uh, just aiming straight down at this one? Sorry, I don't know why it's not... There well, we like, the, yeah, the two below him is the only w way that he could hit, like, only birds right now. Is by right, hitting he... the two south of him. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. That seems like the safest choice, I guess. Uh, well, with that in mind, yeah, Ice Knife doesn't have as much uh, variance on how you do it. Let's see, because Ice Knife, it cones after I hit. Yeah, Ice Knife. No matter which bird you attacked, it would hit a friendly, if not multiples. Yeah, now I'm gonna do Thunder Wave, like directly north of me. So I hit the two birds? Wait, directly south? Yeah, right. Sorry, south. So one is going to pass, and half is not enough that they can survive, so it doesn't even matter. Kill those two birds as the thunder wave shocks out of you and just rumbles through the earth to the south of you there. And I'm just shaking up, but if I'm trying to move now, I can't... Uh, if I move away from the birds, they get an attack of opportunity, right? Yep, any time you go to leave combat, something is going to have the potential of taking an attack of opportunity on you. Yeah, no, then I'm just going to stay where I am and end my turn there. Mark, can I ask a question? Like, I was thinking about backing up, and I wish I had, but I didn't. Um, with the two birds to the left of me, if I backed up one square to the north, those two wouldn't have an attack of opportunity, right? Because they'd stay engaged. Yeah, if you move north, it would be the bird to the south that would have a chance to peck at you. Gotcha. All right. Sorry, Justin. I'll, I'll, I'm feeling bad about you being dead. Uh, 22 to hit Edrin. It's going to do six piercing damage to Edrin. Another blood okay, box swoops a... in. And it will go to Tyrell. Okay. So, I'm going 
to attack the one that's on top of, um, above uh, Edrin here. I mean, not Edrin, uh, Jason. Yeah, I think that one's in your face as well. That makes perfect sense. 14 will hit, and 13 will cut it down as it flies towards your face. And I'm also going to use uh, my bonus action to use Second Wind, where I can, uh, <laughs> I can heal myself for 1d10 plus 1 HP. Hold on. So I heal for 9. All right. And that's the end of that. <laughs> Another one will swoop into Edrin. Uh, 16 to hit you, Edrin? Yeah, that hits. Uh, 3 piercing damage. It's big and... sinks into your body. Yeah, and I am down. Jesus. Yeah, I think the first one dropped him for six. No, he's got more hit points than that. Only he's because he was intelligent enough to actually have constitution on a character who has no hit points. <laughs> it's always rough when you have casters who aren't willing to put into constitution. I mean, I thought I put some in, but clearly not enough. <laughs> oh, there's little that you can do at level one for... Random shit not to get yourselves dead. Other one will swoop into Bront. 20 to hit. That hits. For 4 damage. More at Bront. Uh, for an 18 to hit. For 6 damage. That hits. Bront screams. He's frustrated. Next one is going to continue to peck at Bront. 19 to hit. 6 more damage. Bront collapses in a puddle. Fuck. <laughs> shit. Uh. Uh, let's have Yasin make a death saving throw. Uh, if you would whisper it to me. Uh, yeah, just remind me how to whisper. Uh, if you um, just click on the little red anyway. polyhedron with the B on it, you can select that over to always whisper and just, like, do it for while you're actually dead. I guess realistically it doesn't matter too much with the party in the state that it is currently in. So mark that down. 10 plus is a success. 9 and below is a fail. Uh, Bront, Musa, a death save and throw to me. 10 plus is a success, and 9 and below is a fail. Uh, there's only a single on Tyrell right now. It's going to miss with a 6. Next in line is dead. Edrin, whisper a death save and throw to me, please. 10 plus is a success, and 9 and below is a fail. This talk is going to fly in on Tyrell. Uh, you guys can have a pretty good understanding that these are far more effective when there are two or more on you. Uh, it is going to miss with a 10, I believe, and it will go to tie. All right. <laughs> so, I imagine I have a pretty good grasp of the situation. Um, <laughs> is yeah, there any, was. like, is there any good, like, chance that I would even survive this if I even began to try and attack these birds? Uh, you have seen the speed at which they fly. There's not really a good chance that you can survive this in most any situation here. Um, from what you've seen, they move about twice as far as you can run. And that's just their normal flight. Fuck. All right, well. You guys are basically, like, just walking through the forest and just got, like, swarmed by a pack of hornets. But they're bird-shaped. Yeah, we got hitchcocked. Okay. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm if only birds that. was this frightening, is uh, this has got to be what they had in mind when they created blood hawks? Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna fight it out. Fuck it. I I think that's what you would kind of see as this point is that uh, pretty much single hits are taking these down, and going for the potential of just murdering them all might be your only chance to live, and save your friends. Okay. I am going to... But yeah, at this point, these things are 12 AC, they have 7 hit points, and they fly 60 feet. And okay. They have pack tactics. Alright, I'm gonna stick this out. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Alright, here we go. Okay. That will hit and kill. Do you have one in particular that you are attacking there? The one north of you and the one oh, south um, of you are the ones attacking you at present, but you're about to get swarmed regardless. Yeah, I'm going to hit... Were either one of them damaged at all, or are they both full? Uh, so far, any single one of these that has taken damage, you guys have knocked down dead. Okay, alright, so I'm just going to we go to the north, kill this guy here. Which, with that in mind, do you actually have two light weapons on you? I do not, they're both, they're both heavy. Alright, gotcha. Oh, wait, you, how many daggers do you have? I have one dagger. 
So just for future purposes, this is one of those things when you're fighting like random little shit storms where having multiple light weapons is a bonus because everybody has the uh, bonus action ability to attack twice with light weapons to like bonus attack with a light weapon. Can't think of what it is offhand, but um, that's one of those convenient things everybody has access to. Uh, but yeah, you can basically just tell me which one you're targeting and you are hitting and killing the first thing you swing at. Uh, uh, yeah, that one I marked there. Sorry, I wasn't pushed down the button when I was talking. Word north, gotcha. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so since you told me that, I'm going to draw my dagger. Since it's a shitty situation, <laughs> can I attack the one to the south? Um, I am down because everybody that you know is currently <laughs> essentially dead on the ground that you can do it. Um, but at like normal rules they have to both be light weapons in order to do it but yeah you can basically oh. like yeah that's why having okay, two okay. of them so it's both hands that have it but you can bonus action right now and make an attack with your dagger towards the next all right a 24 will hit and while it won't kill it will leave it bloodied oh yeah see a dagger is the unique situation where you actually have to roll like max damage to get a kill with it mm -hmm. so that is uh, that's one of the reasons why there's certain weapons that are light meant to be dual welded um but let's see next bloodhawk is going to move in and peck at your face a 20 should hit and it will do four yep. damage all right four damage next we'll have an 18 to hit uh, yep that does it four more uh 22 or five more damage yeah i'm dead <laughs> fuck Righty. Well, the bonus is that they are not vindictive creatures, so after they knock you all down, they are going to fly off. Um, let me have everybody roll. Uh, you can take off the whispers, and let me just go down the list. Uh, Yastin, roll a death saving throw. And then Bront, Edrin, and Ty, can all of you all just roll one right now? I think I have, what was it, Yastin failed one. And then everybody else succeeded right now. Yep, I failed my first one. Yeah, I'm clutch with the fucking death saves. That's the second d20 on my death save. Oh, I didn't show. God damn it. Hold on. Uh, I just rolled. Um, where do you go to roll a death save, though? I don't remember uh, how if I you do select that. your actual health once it's reduced to zero, when you click the health, it'll, like, show successes and failures. And in the center, there's a little red dot that lets you roll with the polyhedron. Um, so let's see. Yes, and is it two fails? Bront is it one and one? Edrin is it zero and two? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that eleven. Whatever, that's fine. I'm at one. And then Ty is at one. So let me have everybody do another here. All right. I'm so at, yes, I'm then a, we'll get up save. at one hit point. Oh wow. Huh. Edrin. Yeah, Edrin death. I think Edrin Fuck. stood up. Yeah, he's got three successes there. Or no, Edrin doesn't stand up. Bront is it two and one? And then Ty is at one and one. Uh, so let yep. me have uh, Edrin roll a d4 for me. And then uh, Bront and Tyrone, or Ty, can you guys both roll another death save? Okay. All right, so I'm at two and one. Excuse me, at one and two, excuse me. All right, so Bront is at two and two. Edrin, you will wake up in four hours. Uh, and then Bront and Ty, one more death save from you guys. And I can't try to stabilize them, right? Now that I'm back up on my feet. Um, I mean, I don't have a healing kit or any sort of healing, like, proficiency. Yeah, that's kind of the variance. There's no reason that you can't. Like, as you look around, you have three different people. This is, again, why I like to have things whispered or that I roll. Um, is because you can't actually tell where people are at. So let me have you roll a d6, and we will determine who you would like to try to stabilize. Two... Uh, so let me have you roll a d10, or a d20. You successfully stabilize Edrin. Uh, so let me have, feel like, let me have you roll a, uh, d4, uh, and a d20. And then, Ty, let me have you roll a, another death save. Uh, can I use my lucky to re-roll that? Um, uh, well, inside of initiative, as you were about to die... Uh, Yastin actually targeted you as the person to try to stabilize, and he successfully stabilized you. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, that was just me playing around with it and not actually telling you all specifically what it is. That's part of why I've found an inclination that stealth rolls should be something that I roll for people, and then death saves. I think having people whisper death saves to me is the way to go. Um, but in that case, essentially, as Yastin woke up, um... After that battle, um, he was able to 
Stabilize. He went for Edrin first. Stabilize the person who is essentially already stable. Um, then in the second round is when he went for Ty and Bront stabilized as he was basically focusing on you, like right after you. Bront would have... St no, you stabilized on your last roll. I think that 11 was your stable. I think you were at a full count with the 11? Uh, or was that my mistake? Was the Bront 11 was, your fourth? Bront was my fourth. That was my fourth roll, so I'm two and two. I haven't rolled yet. Oh, wait, that three would have been a death then. Uh, from I was at one and two. I had one good save and then two bad saves. That's why I was asking to re-roll that fourth. That the uh, yeah, the fourth one. Yeah, but he targeted Ty. Uh, yes, and targeted Ty with his medicine check. So I believe Bront was at a ten and then a nine and then a four and then eleven was his full count. Yeah, so the three would have been Bront dying. My bad. I thought the eleven was Bront's uh, fifth roll. Um. Yeah, I didn't, so, think I, I didn't think I rolled my fifth No, no, roll you're right. Head. That fifth roll would have been at the same time there. Because the first one was whispered to me when everybody was still fighting for it. Uh, so at this point, as you all are leaving Phandalin and are just kind of off the trail of Tribor, assaulted by Bloodhawks, uh, everybody getting knocked down, Yastin would have come back uh, in kind of the last moment recognizing things, able to stabilize a few of his friends. You are able to uh, stabilize and recognize Bront passing away uh, in the time that you are able to stabilize the others. Um, Ty, let me have you roll a d4. Okay. Alrighty. Yastin, you have two unconscious teammates and one who seems to not be Br What would you like to do? Uh, is there any way I can try to... Is Bront, like, definitely dead, or is there anything Jastin can try to do to resuscitate him? Uh, effectively, without an actual magical sort of healing, um, the only thing that you have ever heard of has been essentially the intervention of the gods in order to bring people back. Um, from this point, there's not really much of anything that you're likely to have heard of. Um, but that's kind of your choice at this point, is uh, roll a religion check for me. Yeah, you have a vague awareness that you've heard of in the past, um, that gods are about the only thing that have intervened um, to resurrect people from the de from the other side of the veil. Okay, so drawing on his that vague recollection and not able to think of anything else to do, and given that he couldn't, he can't really... Um you know, do much while his two companions are still unconscious as well. He's going to um, sort of uh, beseech, um, I don't even know if he would know which god in particular to beseech. Um, I think more of what I'm getting at for you, though, is essentially those who are divine worshippers of gods are given the power to intervene. Not that uh, any specific person and beseech the gods for their intervention. My point is to reference okay. essentially paladins and clerics. Okay. Um, and where would Bowden be? I mean, obviously he's not, you know, playing, but if would he be, I guess, back in town, are we assuming at this point? Uh, even from your understanding, you all would also notice or know that it's not just people who are worshippers of gods, but almost um, those with Mechanically, people of much higher level. Um, Bowden is a acolyte, perhaps not a uh, like avatar of a god. Um, normally, it's people who are like heroes of the realm, who have a lot of experience behind them, who are able to manipulate the will of the gods to bring somebody back from death. Okay. At this point, mechanically, to throw it out there, I normally like to take a break to allow people to let things kind of set in here. Um, the option that kind of would come to fruition here is that you guys can go to Gariel and attempt to um, find her if she is able to grace you with Tamora's blessing. Um, it would be the effectiveness of um, would would be able to Right, that's wood, right? Bront is wood. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, where you would be able to 
kind of play like an intermediary character while you guys go on a quest to accomplish something for Gariel to effectively get material components to try to resurrect Bront, um, or essentially convince her in some way like that. Uh, or again, like normally I would take a break here to allow you to like let things set in, whether you are looking to affect that change with Bront, you want to try to find a way to bring him back via another adventure type of thing, or is it the type of thing where once you let it actually kind of set, like, that's kind of how adventures die? It's a little worse with a random encounter, because that was literally, you guys were just in the wilds, and you happened upon a flock of murder birds. Um, so that's one of the things with kind of how death plays out, is normally this would be, it just sucks because we just took a break. Um, but normally this is something where you take some time to actually let it set in. Like, do I want to play an NPC for a little bit while we go and do something? Or uh, do I want to roll a new character who just jumps into the adventure and we more or less mourn the dead? Because also, all adventurers understand guys are in it for great riches and you're risking your lives at kind of every turn. So... Let's take a quick little moment here. Let me know if you have any questions at all, Wood. Uh, if you have any thoughts, I'm not going to go far, but this is more or less a moment for you to kind of decide the direction that will happen. Um, but effectively for Justin, your choice is, are you going to try to drag Bront back to Gariel and see what she can do? Or are you going to, like, wait here for your friends to regain consciousness um, and have the three of you taken back at a later point right okay and i think that'll partially depend on what um what wood wants to do sort of just out of character yeah i mean i think i want to roll up something with a healer because that's what the party needs so uh i'm cool doing that maybe i'll be uh lady gabrielle's kind of idiot cousin or something well i can also <laughs> throw it out there to the um taking the healer's feet in a group that doesn't have healing is an extremely, I mean, even with actual healers, the healer's feet is a really great way to bypass a need for healing. Um, it's only essentially good uh, for like one big heal per long rest. Um, but effectively it gives you a way to keep people alive with a little bit of healing when they get knocked down. Um, and it's much cheaper than healing potions. The healer's feet just allows you to buy, I think the healer's kit is five silver and it's 10 uses. And that's, that's one of the things that overall is a good way to sidestep the need for healing when somebody doesn't in particular want to play one of the like dedicated healing classes. And even when you play a healing class, you don't have to be a dedicated healer. Having access to healing is usually enough to avoid death. You can't out-heal damage like you can in MMOs. It's definitely... You guys are getting beat where people are dying. You kind of need to get away. Like, even with a healer, those birds would have likely still been able to kill you all. Yeah, once they surrounded us, I think we were done for. No matter what we did. Yeah, my bad. The healer's kit is 5 gold, and it gives you 10 uses of heal. Um, and, like, I think at level 1, it's like a D8 plus your hit number of hit dice, which is one, plus I think your wisdom modifier uh, based on the feat. But that's one of the things that, like, that's the one per long rest is the actual heal that does, like, a number of healing points. Um, after that, when somebody gets knocked down, you can use a point of it, and you can do that as much as you'd like, and it just heals them back up to one health. Um, and then specifically as well, you can stabilize people automatically, and it does that one health. Regardless of whether you take the healer's feet, though, it can auto-stabilize people with a healer's kit. Yeah, it's too bad I didn't add that feat. <laughs> I wasn't adding feats. I don't think I added any feats. Um, anyway, so I, I could roll up a new character, I think, for next week, rather than you guys chase around trying to... Did you take the plus uh, ones, though, like across the board? Like you just did a normal human? I did. Okay, okay. As long as you didn't like completely miss that you could take a feat... Uh, you still had, like, a lot of odd numbers. Yeah, you did pretty good, though, with those stats. 
Yeah, no, I just missed the, I just missed taking a feat. Um, uh, but the I'm feats a character for next week. The feats are definitely overpowered. Like for what it's worth, once you offer variant humans, it's pretty difficult for any race to compete with the variant human. So I guess the question is, what are you guys going to do while I'm being dead? <laughs> um, well, I can't do anything. I'm, I'm knocked the fuck out, so. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so I guess he said he was just going to go into town? I, I don't know. What are you doing, Jason? Uh, sorry, I had to step away for a sec. Um, so there, so Edrin and Tyrell are both unconscious at this point? Or is Edrin uh, awake? Uh, both are unconscious, and they actually rolled the same number of hours that they will be unconscious for. So their bodies are basically just kind of sitting there, like, labored breathing. But they've got four hours until they wake up with a single hit point. They are otherwise stable at zero hit points right now. Okay, well, I don't think I want to leave them out here in the open. Um, can he try to sort of gently move them so they're maybe in, in the trees? to try and get some cover and then he'll probably just try and keep a watch while waiting for them and hoping that they'll wake up. Uh, yeah, you most certainly can at this point. We can definitely assume that yes, and essentially carries everyone uh, into a safer position off of the trail and more or less stands vigil over the three bodies. And he'll probably um, uh, I guess he'll take what um, Take stuff off of Bront, um, like the gold and stuff. I mean, Bront did stab him, even if it was accidental. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Wow. Already <laughs> stripping the corpse. Bront is not even cold, man. Those are some it nice been boots. like 15 minutes. For him, for him it's, it's utilitarian. I mean, they, they're they going to need that stuff. And, you know, obviously, when, 21 gold. when Bront comes back, he'll, you know, or not Bront, but, um, you know, Wood's second character, I think he'll be, he'll be, um, willing to give Gabriel. him something. Gabriel's but like for stupid now, cousin. Yeah, yeah. But for now, he'll take the, uh, yeah. I enjoy <laughs> how hard a time you're having with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, in character, he would definitely, he would not be, he wouldn't be particularly sentimental. I mean, I guess we've, the party has only known each other for about a week. Yeah, you guys are like four or five days into traveling as a group at this point. <laughs> yeah, so Good to know for next time. <laughs> Yeah, so he'll so he'll um sort of yeah take the stuff from the corpse, drag uh, Edrin and Tyrell into the trees, and then keep a watch and wait for them to wake up. That's what you get from a worshiper of Joaquin. <laughs> yeah, does this count as a short rest? <laughs> Being knocked out like on the ground? No, no. Sadly, that's part of the problem. Is that you're literally on the verge of death for four hours sitting there. Um. The fact that Yastin is awake, I'm not actually going to roll for random encounters, but that was essentially where the birds were going to leave you all there. If he hadn't rolled that 20, um, everybody, if they survived being uh, destabled, destabilized, uh, once you had stabilized, you all could have been there for any amount of time unwatched after when random shit could have happened. Um, but effectively, we are going to kind of leave it at that point. I think this will be about where we wrap up, um, but for what it is worth, everybody will level up, um, <laughs> and we'll put you all okay. at level two, so you can create your new character at level two. Um, if you right. have any interest on how things play out, um, we can establish a way for you to resurrect Bront still. Um, again, it'll just be a kind of side quest, so if you want to make this character as like an intermediary to get back into Bront, that is perfectly acceptable. Um, that, that's kind of one of the things, like, I don't try to prevent deaths. Um, usually the only time I will fudge dice is on, like, auto-kills, rather than letting the dice kind of determine everything on kind of how that played out. Um, but, like, overall... Uh, allowing quests to resurrect people is, I think, one of the more entertaining aspects of the game. Um, and it's very similar to how, like, resurrection rituals go, where there's, like, a skill challenge to actually bring somebody back from across the veil. Uh, so, as we kind of take a week here to figure out things, let me know if you have any thoughts or questions. 
on Brunt. Um, having seen how it plays out, this is again where having conversations in Discord across the week can be a really good idea. But again, under level five, I am always open to you all kind of switching things about. So if you want to retcon any of your feats and people want to layer up on the healing feat, again, healing feat is a really good way to avoid having a healer because it gives you an option when somebody drops to zero hit points. It's just one tick off of the healing kit, brings them back up to a single hit point. It's not much, but that's the action economy is the big things where once you lose an action on your side, shit goes downhill real quick. Having nine creatures is bad enough, but those are nine creatures that all give pack, tac pack tactics, so they essentially, essentially flank um, when two of them are on you, giving themselves advantage. Um, and that's where they really shine. So going down one person was a lot to lose. They then had three attacks to your one. Granted, it was only one attack for most of you to be able to kill them, there was also a good chunk of you all that could go down in a single attack as well. Um, but just kind of keep those things in mind if you all want to switch up different feats. Um, and then as you are creating a new character, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm sorry to kill off your character. It's definitely not intended. I do like to follow the dice and how they kind of direct things and let it play out. I think it makes a more compelling story. And then had you guys actually... Had we seen Ty stand up to those six birds, that would have been an absolutely epic battle. Um, and that's <laughs> kind of one of those things that, like, that was going to be an amazing battle if you guys lived. Uh, the moment that happened, it was definitely the type of thing, like, it's, it's just kind of like how the random encounter tables go. It's deadly. I don't think Brock could come back from stabbing Jastin in the back, so... I'm okay with finding another to rolling up another character and he'll be uh, grumpy it'll be good again that's up to you i mean in the long run that's the type of thing where you guys kind of will learn over time and edrin already recognized like there's a lot of danger to standing next to a friend who is prepared to murder anything that's hostile around him um and that's one of those things where you all have to kind of figure out those different levels of like, Yastin needs to back up somebody else to get his sneak attacks. But at the same time, the closer you all are to somebody who's friendly, the more chances you have to essentially have a failed attack that can hurt somebody. Um, yeah. And I kind of like that dynamic of a one not being enough to just hit the person that you would randomly attack at, but forcing an actual, like, another attack roll on it. Um, it's just unfortunate that it was also still a hit. But that's up to you whether you feel like, yeah, it's probably best not to have Bront try to come back from stabbing him in the back. Um, but it was definitely an interesting dynamic. Yeah, it's kind of funny in a way that he killed him with his rapier. And I have like a four foot long great sword. <laughs> I'm just swinging around like not even a foot away from him. <laughs> and I mean, that can be exactly how it happened where you're like flailing around with this great sword. And Yastin's like dodging out of the way of the greatsword only to basically dodge into the rapier. And it was actually Yastin's fault that he got stabbed because he was trying to dodge your weapon. So it doesn't have to be in particular like Bront's fault, but it's definitely one of those things where it was still Bront's weapon. Well, and Yastin stripped the corpse, so we're good. <laughs> it's all even. <laughs> uh. It's like, yeah, do you guys know of any colleges around here where I can sell this cadaver? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's not quite that uh not quite that uh, depraved but can we bribe a bribe a manacore with a cadaver is that is that something that can happen <laughs> that he might act, yeah that he might actually be uh open to so yeah overall um i i always like to have the actual conversation around a death and not try to stress moving on with a session it always varies when they happen it's certainly not always ideal when something that kills off a character happens um but it is definitely the type of thing that please get at me if you want to chat about it um because there is a lot to having characters die uh but let me know if you have any questions there as you're creating the character you can start with kind of a generic reason that you are in Fandolin. Um, based on what sort of backgrounds you have that you go for. 
to let me know there. Tying into Gariel is certainly a really good uh, option. Um, and once you kind of cement, cement that in character creation, get at me again, um, and I'll give you some more information. Once that's your background, you'll have a, a little more of an idea about what she is about. Depending on what you know about this actual adventure, um, it will be spoilers for some things in that you will essentially gain um, an in on like the what it is happening here. Like, everybody else currently, you've been hired here to, like, make riches. Gariel is not here for money. She is specifically in Phandalin for a very particular reason. Cool. Sounds like an opportunity. Yep. There's, like, one of the cool things about, like, why this is such a great introduction adventure is there's a lot of the different factions of Run that are active in this town. And the different ways to find and start interacting with them are an inn into these factions and helping the factions enough they will often like get friendly with you and potentially invite one if not the party into their factions um so if you tie it into her right off the bat you'll basically already have an in into the faction cool and i'll be level two so mission accomplished plus you guys need a healer because you're bleeding all over the place all the time <laughs> And it's funny, I leveled it up and I got action, yeah, action surge where I can do uh, two attacks in one turn. There you go. <laughs> that oh, ac action surge is badass. Again, that's one of those things like getting into a situation like that is a really good time to go Nova and start to use all of your shit. I was actually looking over Edrin to see like sleep is one spell that is really good for low hit point enemies like that. It's not especially powerful. A lot of the time but sleep was the type of thing that i was hoping to see that you had because it's the type of thing where you could have easily put four or five of the birds unconscious and you guys could have turned those tides real quick um but it's always just a question of had they not been inside of your group like that you could have easily killed four or five with that same spell because essentially they had no chance to live once it targeted them um and also to throw it out there, had you put it over the party, you would have taken one of Yastin's death saving throws, um, and you could have potentially knocked down another person, but you also could have killed five or six of those nine birds. Uh, so there's a lot of variances on how uh, different things play out, and using all of your skills can definitely change it. But now that you have action surge, that's definitely one of the things that can turn tides when you get to take an extra action. And then once you guys like have extra attack at level five, it essentially gives you four attacks. Um, if you go ahead and get two light weapons, so you have a uh, more like low level creature fighting setup um, with action surge at level two, you could take three attacks doing an attack action surge and then a bonus action. So there's a lot of different variances for how you can like throw everything forward in a single turn like that. Yeah, is, there a, oh, is there a swarm ahead. mechanic like in Pathfinder? Um, I am not familiar, terribly familiar with Pathfinder. I have a feeling swarm is probably likely very similar to uh, how flanking as an optional rule works, but pack tactics does work. Um, pack tactics is if there is essentially a conscious creature that's an ally on one of your enemies, you gain advantage while attacking it. Um, flanking basically does the same thing, but for anybody. Um, but other than that, like, not knowing exactly what swarms do, there are swarm creatures that essentially, like, um, skeletons are like a CR, I think, one half creature. So, like, um, two level ones versus a single skeleton is a pretty even match fight. But eventually there's, I think it's a CR six skeletal swarm which is like having like 15 skeletons kind of in the same like space. Um, and it just, I don't know specifically what the swarm is for Pathfinder to know. It's just a thing you can't hit with a one-on-one -on -one attack. You need to throw an area of effect at it because it's like a swarm of spiders or bees or something. Uh, not that I know of. Essentially swarms take like a reduced amount of damage from most things that would kind of do a single attack. Um, 
but I don't think the mechanic would work that same way. It's more that they have resistance, so they take half damage. But, like, a magical weapon that does piercing would still do full damage versus a swarm, whereas, like, a piercing weapon would do half because it's likely to have resistance to the non-magical damage types. Got it. That makes sense. Oh. Well, guys, I'm not super bummed. I'm, I'm a little bummed that maybe you went through my pocket so quick, but otherwise, <laughs> I'm not bummed about this. Shit happens. Uh, so that was fun. And I'll see you next week. Yeah. All right. I'm glad I'm glad you've got a positive attitude on it cuz again one of the things that's set up about this like campaign is if you don't just glance over level 1 and just immediately like milestone people it is really really difficult to live as a level 1 adventurer. And you guys saw it. Like I didn't force you to continue on fighting, but basically a fight has to take a rest afterwards. Mhm. Mm um... And that's the same regardless of whether you've got a healer. Like don't the healer is able to get you up, but that usually just is able to get you back in the fight to get knocked down again. No. <laughs> Fuck. Um, but yeah, I was gonna ask one anymore. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask fucking. Um, you said we could switch out gear, right? I like I will switch one thing for one thing. So I'll switch out my battle axe for a light weapon. <laughs> just use the dagger and the short sword or something. Um. I feel like it's it's based on like the actual character creation still like it's not just that you can switch anything out but like if you made a mistake in character creation is kind of what I was getting at or not necessarily a mistake but something that you now see is like not as ideal for yourself um so I'm not entirely sure what you can swap it out as but I'm pretty sure fighters have the choice of essentially like two I want to say it's actually finesse and not really just light weapons but I think fighters basically have two different weapon choices where you can pick the great sword and then you can get two like normal weapons, like uh, simple weapons. Um, but give me a second and I can get back to you on like how that plays out. Gotcha. Uh, I had a quick question in terms of leveling up. Do you use the fixed hit points or do you want us to roll for them? Um, I prefer if you guys roll for them because I like as much rolling as possible overall. The stats are the big thing that I don't like rolling because of how easy it is for somebody to just be exponentially better than the rest of the group. Um, but overall, I do not force people to take the roll um, because part of the problem with uh, part of the problem with how it's set up is that when it rounds up the average, you get better hit points by just taking the average. It's kind of absurd to me that it rounds up. Um, but overall, it's purely up to you in the long run. Um, the way hit points work is it's almost like your heroic value rather than hit points are a big thing. Uh, and it can certainly be just as dangerous to roll as rolling for stats, where if you roll enough ones, your character is still on a uh, different level of how poorly things can go. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm fine either way. I just wasn't sure if you had a, a preference, so I'll probably roll mine. So. I like the idea of sort of that randomness too. Yeah, overall I prefer the randomness. Um, just because like I I really do like dice in any situation as possible. Um I have I just haven't figured out like what method of doing stat creation I think is the best way to actually function as I actually like to eventually once a campaign gets up to a higher level I actually bump people's stats up by switching them over to roles, and you get to like remodify your characters if you're uh like how I usually flavor it is some level as you are like gaining that divine flavor or favor um where it switches to a more heroic campaign of you're no longer like going from this stat roll, you go to forty six dropping the lowest, and you have to have over. 75 as a total stat um you have to have at least two 15s but that's usually like seven or eight that i like to switch people over to that and it's just to recognize not only like skill wise are you more heroic not only from your actual like uh um asis your stat increases are you more heroic but your actual like starting physical body is more heroic uh so with a fighter your initial choice was... Oh, wait. 
How did you already get a great sword and a great axe? Like it's slightly different than that. It'd normally be chainmail or leather armor, longbow, and arrows. Um, a martial weapon and a shield or two martial weapons. Oh, that's what you probably did is the two marshals. Yeah. Um, and then a light crossbow and bolts or two hand axes. So really what I would say is you're most likely to be able to swap out a crossbow and gain two hand axes. Um, otherwise, I would just say in the long run, take the time to uh, purchase um, two light weapons. You can use bronze money. For that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as well, if you're looting his corpse, you can pretty much take all of his equipment too. Yeah, yeah that's what I was kind of thinking. Like if, if um, what if you just want to send me your whatever your inventory was and i'll just uh um... that's cold you want me to send you a list <laughs> right well i mean just so he knows what he's what he's taking yeah you can get it from the dm i think okay okay yeah i Damn. mean if you're looting him at this point um let me have you do an investigation Justin. <laughs> sure <laughs> Be how well you're able to go, dude. He thoroughly looks through your corpse. It's like, what's in the prison pocket here? Um, you are able to get his longbow, his rapier, and roll it randomly like that doesn't always work very well. Uh, and thirteen arrows. Okay. And also, can he take some of the um, blood hawk feathers to uh, put through his arrows, or like to for the um, forget the name. Uh, uh, unless you have a particular change. skill, yeah, in fletching, I would say no, but you can take them to go to somebody to have them fletch arrows for you. Okay, yeah, so maybe he'll take one of the uh, the hawks, too. You Most can also the feathers, his I mean... corpse of 21 gold, 6 silver, and 5 copper. Okay, don't worry, I'll give some of it back to your to your new character. I, I, I'm not that cold. Well, that would certainly be a weird thing to do. <laughs> I don't mind you taking it. I don't mind you having it. I think I just minded sending you an email and your list. Oh no, I, I didn't actually. I didn't actually mean like. Yeah, I didn't. I yeah, I didn't mean that, like that. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah, you're as you guys spend for a rogue <laughs> <laughs> for a grave robbery. Yeah, you're pretty polite. As you guys spend more time as a party as well, the party loot list is a really good way to keep your coin because eventually people will be spending shit uh, far more communally as it really does function to once you've got gold in your pocket you don't need to have hundreds or thousands of gold yeah i'll put i'll put the uh i'll put bronze money into the um the uh party loot list well if you're editing it that in then don't take it from me posting it into the channel like that but that's all i really ask is that you all make sure to keep i i don't care too much about the actual details of how things go just don't try to fudge your way through it because in the long run it's it's just not ideal. It's not something where I think any of that money or loot matters in the long run. So I'm doing my ability scores as a standard array. Is that where we landed with, with that? Uh, I, I do point by. You can choose it as standard array, but you don't have to specifically do standard array. Point by allows you to like min-max yourself as like all 15s with three, like three 15s and three 8s. Or go to the point where you want to do like two 15s, a 14, I think an 11, a 10, and an 8. So there's a lot of different variances. You don't have to do standard array. Copy that. All right, also one... good next week. I got to go uh, help with dinner, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. In the long run, one day I think I'm going to do a modified point by as what I'll do is like character creation that gives better averages than rolling, but is not like so random that one person can roll fucking low and one person can roll high. The biggest reason because I like rolling because I play suicidal characters when I roll low as hell, and it's a lot of fun to play somebody who literally has a death wish, but can't ever actually die. Always manages to live despite always being that person who's like diving into the stupid situations. Um, it's just not always entertaining as a beginner to constantly feel like, dude, this guy has plus five to everything, and I've got plus two to my main stat. Um, also, before we all leave, uh, I'm not going to be here next week, so um, I got some more stuff going on. Um, I don't know if you just want to NPC my character. <laughs> That's a, It's a really shitty time to leave, but uh, yeah, I'll, I won't be here next week. <laughs> Uh, we can see as we can gather the group through the week, um, but I will definitely look into that. That was Ty who said he couldn't be here? Yeah, Tyrell will not be here.
Uh, Christopher, how about you? I know you said sometimes your Sundays aren't open. Yeah, let's see. Let's go to check my schedule. Well, next week, Sunday, I am free. And the one after that, I am working. Okay, so this was the fluke. Otherwise, it, is, it does kind of keep that schedule. That was one thing I was curious with as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll kind of play it on the fly. I think if we have enough players, we'll continue on. Um, the biggest thing why I wanted to cancel it that one week is that we were getting the actual information from Fandolin. Um, and it's always rough to have a player who's a part of the campaign already miss so much information. And again, you guys like talk to everyone. So it would have been even more because it wasn't just going forward and talking to a few NPCs and getting a few of the hooks that existed in Fandolin. You got like all of the hooks. Damn, man. Otherwise, everybody have a wonderful week here. Uh, again, we'll likely plan on having it next week, but we can definitely see across the actual week here. Um, and if anybody has any further questions, let me know. Uh, Would as you finish up, like, cementing your character in mind, um, we can definitely talk further, um, especially if you continue forward with the idea that you are working with uh, Gariel. Um, how much... Let me actually look to your notes real quick before you do go. Um, I don't even have you said. How much experience do you have, Wood? Are you have you played for a while? Uh, I mean, on and off for many years, but not in a lot of groups. All right. Are you vaguely familiar with, not to spoil too much for other people, the Harpers? Vaguely. How could you uh, play all the Baldur's games and not know about the Harpers, right? Well, that is what Gariel is. So that will be part of who, when you are rolling this character, if you go forward with working with Gariel, um, you will be on some level associated with the Harpers. Cool. That'll be good. I think I'll be bad at it, but that's good. That'll be fun. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you could be bad at being the Harpers. They have a very gray line in what they do. So. Well, we'll see if we can find it. All right, guys, that was fun. Everybody uh, have a great week here. Enlightening. I learned a lot about everybody. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Take care. See you all. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. Yeah, yeah take care.